Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone. Uh, today we are going to continue our uh, lecture in the food technology class. Okay, the topic we are going to deal with today is food rheology. Uh, in this module, we will try to get an understanding of the term food rheology. So we will look at uh, some important definition and some methodological models that are useful for us in designing, uh, for example, a uh, food processing system. Uh, these are yeah, these are the books I use yeah, in the case of food rheology. And uh, to check and update the state of the art research in food rheology and food uh, engineering yeah, in general, you can check a uh, large paper about this in uh, the following journal. Yeah, so just general of food engineering. And uh, if you want to study rheology specifically, you can check uh, also the journal of rheology by American Institute of Physics. Okay. Um, when we talk about food rheology, the first question we are going to have, of course, is why should we learn food rheology? All right. Uh, you know that uh, food product yeah, must be formulated, yeah, must be formulated in a such a manner to exhibit desirable food property. Yeah. Uh, you can think that uh, what happened when the product are not correctly formulated rheologically, for example, yeah. If you want to pour your sauce onto the plate, yeah, for instance, you must not make your hands so painful, right? No extensive shaking or tapping. Here, the rheology of food materials actually can be tuned by changing the composition of ingredients. Yeah, uh, like uh, for instance, uh, fat, sugar. Uh, of course, this is the domain of food uh, chemists. Yeah, the job of food. Uh, food um, food chemists. <clears throat> so, if um, let's say uh, the customer are informed, for instance, that the product are more creamy as well as new and improved, actually it means that such uh, rheological properties are more pleasing to the eye and mood of the uh, customer. So here, rheology actually I am at measuring yeah, measuring the properties of materials that control their deformation and flow behavior when being subjected to external force. External force here, so for instance, pouring, sucking, scooping, and so on. So how about uh, rheology in uh, food industry? Actually, uh, rheology plays a uh, critical role in, for instance, yeah, in facilitating mass transfer or heat transfer for a design of food processing. That to control the mechanical food quality yeah, for the final product, and then also to improve yeah, improve sensory taste for the customer. So, um, what is food rheology actually? Uh, food rheology is VSIC. So here we are talking about VSIC and yeah? VSIC of the formation and flow of matter. Here we investigate how a material responds to applied stress to produce to finally yeah, produce strain. So as you notice here, we get four keywords: formation, yeah, deformation, flow, stress, and strain. Yeah, as we see here, the term deformation, yeah, is mentioned first prior to the term flow. Because of what? Because of what? Because deformation actually occurs first before the material. Yeah, I mean the food material start to flow, yeah, start flowing. You know that uh, the information on this aspect, yeah, I mean, the deformation flow, stress and strain, yeah, is really, really critical yeah, in designing a variety of food processing equipment, yeah, such as pumps, mixer, and so on. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's look at some of the definition here. Yeah. Rheology is actually talking about deformation and flow of body when it is subject to stress. Yeah, What do we mean by body here? So here we are talking about either solid, yeah, or liquid, or gas. Okay. So body means, uh, or body refers to solid or liquid or, or, or gas. If we consider a solid, uh, for instance, yeah, let's look at an ideal solid. An ideal solid is a body, is a body that 
a form in an elastic manner. For an ideal solids, the energy of deformation is fully recovered when the stress is removed. Yeah. No, like it's a illustration shown here about the solid object <coughs> that is fixed onto a base. Yeah, this is the base. When we apply stress, yeah, F, for instance, yeah, when we apply a stress or a force at the top surface, it will deform. Yeah, it will deform, but if we remove the stress, it will turn into its original shape. So the energy of deformation is uh, therefore recovered. Same thing happen uh, to rubber band, uh, for, for instance, yeah, for example, you know rubber band, right? Uh, if you pull a rubber band, yeah, in other words, you apply stress, yeah, on it, it will deform. But when you remove that force, it goes back to its original shape. So for an ideal solid, the energy of deformation is actually fully recovered. <clears throat> Uh, now let's look at an ideal liquid or an ideal gas. Yeah, in this in this case, yeah, in this case the body will deform irreversibly. Yeah, irreversibly. What it does it mean? Yeah, it means that uh, or, or in other words, uh, it it flow. Yeah, it flow. So energy of deformation in case of an ideal liquid or a gas is converted to heat. Yeah, so it cannot be recovered when stress is removed. <laughs> But uh, actually, uh, in reality, we have neither ideal solid nor ideal liquids. Yeah. For most um, uh, liquids, yeah, yeah. for most liquid, uh, their behavior is actually in between a solid or in between a solid and a liquid. So we call them viscoelastic. Some examples include uh, shampoo or a liquid soap. Liquid soap, yeah, for instance. Uh, here, the ability to describe or, or predict the physical behavior of bodies yeah, when subject to stress is very important. Why? Very important because it plays a critical role in designing the uh, industrial processes yeah, to, pro to produce the final product, the product. Therefore, we need reliable mathematical expression that uh, actually in this, this aspect, mathematical expression, uh, will be discussed later on in this module. <clears throat> uh, I have already mentioned the term stress and strain before. Right? So let's try to get better understanding on this. Thing. So stress is actually a force that results in deforming a body divided by the area and the area over which the force is applied so this is force divided by area you know yeah force divided by area so we can say that this is a normalized form of force the unit of it is uh, pascal or actually newton over meter square so we can say it is a pascal we can apply a force in a various way in a body here yeah, for instance yeah So if we consider a solid body, we can either compress it, compress it, or we can put it under tension, or we can fix on one side, yeah, one side of it. Then we apply a force on the other side to create shear, create a shear, shear here. In case of fluid, actually, uh, we mostly work with shear force or uh, stress stress. So here, in this case, <clears throat> okay. What about uh, strain? Okay, when we uh, talk about strain, uh, it is actually a measure of how much body deform to the blade stress relative to its original dimension. Uh, let's now look at, uh, look at the solid object shown here. Uh, let's say that there is a thickness of H, thickness of H, and let's assume that the bottom surface of the solids is attached to a base. Yeah? So this is a fixed surface. And we then apply shear force on the top surface. 
as I mentioned before. So uh, by, by applying a shear force, we will bend the top surface. Yeah. So how much bending is occurring can be identified by looking at the distance of x on the top and x on the top and the angle theta here the angle theta so the h is the total thickness as uh, so thickness so the steer strain is the angle that is formed due to bending and we call that uh, shear strain uh, yeah, tangent theta because tangent theta is x over h uh, for, more, <coughs> for small deformation, actually, we can assume that tangent theta equals to theta. So, theta equals to x over c. Theta equals x over h. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, for example, if we have a coffee beans, yeah, they might be subjected to stress to convert their, um, their form into powder, right? So, uh, if you buy coffee in a supermarket, usually we get the powder form of coffee. Here, uh, there's just how much decays to become small particle into the final uh, product. <clears throat> so the concept of stress and strain are actually beneficial to understand our rheological models. Yeah. The rheological models are then useful finally in understanding the mechanical behavior of a material. So first we'll look at that solid tube here, for instance. Yeah. And when and we will consider an elastic solid for this case, yeah, for which there is a relationship between shear stress and shear stress here, and or, or we call it sigma equals to uh, shear, stress, shear stress sigma and shear uh, rate theta. Yeah. Now, uh, the relationship between shear stress and shear strain, or sigma, equals to eta times theta. Yeah, eta times theta, where eta is called shear modulus. And this equation is also called Hooke's law because many solid materials, this linear relationship is the case. So if we plot theta versus sigma, we will get a straight line, and slope of that line will be eta or the shear modulus. You can note that uh, the term modulus is a measure of the amount of force per unit area, yeah? the amount of force per unit area. In other words, it, uh, the stress yeah, that is uh, required to achieve given amount of uh, deformation. So the elastic solid is also called Hockian solid because it follows the Hock law. We use this model to describe the behavior of various types of solid. Yeah? This symbol in relationship can be used to describe uh, the behavior of solids such as steel also in our case here, in the case of food, we can consider this model for, for instance, an Excel, dry pasta, or hard candy. Uh, this linear relationship is valid for a small strain, uh, less than 0 0.01. So uh, when working with gel, for instance, we normally use larger value of uh, strain. Uh, by the way, you can uh, you may check some example of numerical problems involving equation that we already discussed here. Yeah, this is a simple, uh, numerical problem, you can check. Here we uh, use the equation that we mentioned usually. So this is, uh, you can try to um, uh, solve the problem first before seeing the answer. Also problem two. Uh, now what about shear strain, strain in fluids? Actually in the case of fluid, we use theta r, yeah, theta r. And we call that strain rate. Strain rate. This is commonly called uh, shear rate. So theta r is d theta over dt. The units are one over second, or we can call it uh, hertz. Hertz. Yeah. Not so that in case of fluid. Yeah. In case of fluid, we are interested in the rate at which strain is produced when shear strain is applied. So the difference between solid and fluid is that in case of fluid, we are going to use shear rate. Yeah. Oh, she has this is applied over a period of time and fluid to form and we work with red. Um, we work uh, with red, yeah. We work with red rather than the strain itself, yeah, as, as, as we show in the case of solid body. Um, now we come to the question of what are actually fluid, yeah. Fluid is what? What is, what is fluid? 
any idea? Yeah, our fluid is uh, actually a substance that continually deform or flow under an unplanned shear stress, regardless of how small the unplanned stress. <clears throat> uh, so fluid here is include all liquids and all gases. Liquid and gas is a fluid. Nah. Uh, fluids can be roughly classified into two uh, groups. First, is Newtonian fluids. Newtonian fluids is when the relation between the shear stress and the steel stress is linear. The constant of proportion being the coefficient of viscosity, and the constant of this linear relationship will be the coefficient of viscosity, or we can uh, simply call viscosity. Okay. So um, the uh, remaining uh, groups can be classified, can be grouped into neon Newtonian fluids. In this case, the relation between the shear strand and steel strand is non-linear. Yeah, it's very simple classification. When it is linear, yeah, I mean the relationship between shear strand and steel strand. When it is linear, then we can call it is uh, the Newtonian fluids. But uh, otherwise, we should call them. Newtonian fluids. The examples are uh, pseudoplastic fluid, ingum fluid, peloton fluid. We can actually uh, discuss this uh, type of fluid one by one. Yeah. Okay. This uh, figure show different type of flow behavior. When we apply shear stress, yeah, shear stress is actually what? Yeah, shear stress is actually the force that we apply, right? That is force divided by stress. Yeah. So when we apply shear stress. There will be corresponding shear rate. When we plot the graph, yeah, we will get different shape of curve or lines depending on the type of the fluids. Yeah. So the plastic, for example, a lot of food products they display um, pseudoplastic uh, behavior. Pseudoplastic behavior. This is very common actually. When we increase the shear rate, yeah, there is more than proportional increase in shear rate compared to Newtonian fluid, for instance, yeah. There is more than proportional increase in shear rate compared to, for example, Newtonian fluid. This tells us uh, that the viscosity is different at different point on the line. Yeah, viscosity is different when we take this line compared to, for instance, this line, compared to this line also. Yeah, so it means that the viscosity is different at different point on the line. Uh, the opposite of pseudoplastic is dilatant. Yeah, dilatant, dilatant flow behavior is not common for food. Actually, we don't have many example. Okay, another thing that we can see from this graph is that all curve except Bingham line, Bingham line and Herschel Buckley start from zero. What does it mean then? It means that the moment we apply stress or the force, yeah. Food material will start flowing immediately. Yeah, the keyword here is flowing immediately. For example, when you pour honey, you know you know honey that <laughs> you don't have to wait, you don't have to shake or tap because honey is a Newtonian fluid. So so, <clears throat> but uh, notice being a model. Yeah, the line start at somewhere on the way axis. Yeah, on the way axis, there is a certain minimum value of stress or force before we can initiate flow. We call this minimum value as a yield stress, yeah? yield stress. Anyway, we will closely inspect in more detail all of these model one by one around in this uh, module. <clears throat> now, please consider the behavior of a fluid that is under steady flow. <clears throat> So if we subject a small sample to continue shearing at constant rate, then we call make a plot of shear stress versus shear rate. Shear stress versus shear rate. As I mentioned before, we can get a linear relationship between them. If this is the case, then this type of linear relationship tells us that this is for Newtonian. This is for Newtonian. Slope, yeah, slope is mu, and mu is viscosity. <clears throat> so at each point in this line, 
Use line. Yeah. Viscosity is actually constant. But remember that this is at a fixed temperature, yeah? at fixed temperature, okay? Because when we, uh, for instance, increase the temperature, viscosity will generally increase. <clears throat> so in, in the case of Newton fluid here, viscosity is independent of G rate. Water is an uh, example of an example of uh, Newton fluid. Yeah? You in the case of water is uh, time rises to minus three Pascal second at twenty degree G. Many equations are actually also Newtonian. For example, water, tea, coffee, vegetable oil, clarified juice. So the relationship in the case of Newton fluid between shear stress and shear rate is sigma equals to mu times theta r. Yeah. This tell us what this tell us the behavior of Newton fluid in steady shear flow. And uh, based on and the Newton general law, we can actually conclude that uh, the higher the viscosity of a fluid, the uh, greater is the force per unit area. Yeah? This, I, mean, I mean, shear stress or sigma required to produce a certain rate of shear. Theta R. As shown here in this picture, yeah, fluid A is more viscous, more viscous than fluid B because its sigma value is higher, right? Sigma value is higher. Viscosity is measured with various type of rheometer, yeah, rheometer for some sound fluid, which are Newton fluid. Viscosity is a constant over a wide range of uh, shear states. Okay, you get it. Uh, this is the principle of a rheometer. You can uh, easily notice that um, this apparatus actually measures the push yeah, stress needed to get the material to move on certain speed of shear rate. So we will get the data of stress, uh, stress yeah, with respect to shear rate. <clears throat> Okay, uh, talking about viscosity in general, it is uh, actually a resistance of liquid to flow or thickness. Water, for instance, is thin because it, it shows a lower viscosity yeah, compared to, for instance, vegetable oil, which is uh, thick because it shows it possesses or uh, yeah, it, it is supply a higher viscosity. And this, this table shows some of the uh, viscosity value for several food materials, such as peanut, honey, and cheese, and milk. Okay, uh, these are the, the thing that I'm going to talk today. So next week, we will continue our discussion. Yeah. Next week, we will continue our talk on pseudoplastic. Pseudoplastic is uh, um, an example of non-Newtonian. So we already discussed Newtonian and starting from next week, we will uh, talk about some non-Newtonian fluids, yeah. Okay, this all today. Thank you very much for your attention and I welcome any question and comments in the discussion section after this. Yeah, okay, uh, let me close. Uh, let me stop the sharing session. Yeah, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.